Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, I am your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted you are joining us again today for this Out and About show where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are strictly my own and not connected with any organization. That said, joining me today in the studio is that national, international guest, Hans-Peter Hutter, who is social scientist, senior scientist, associate professor, and deputy head at the Department of Environmental Health, the Center for Public Health at the Medical University of Vienna. He's a doctor, an ecologist, and a researcher in environmental public health. That's a lot of words to you, so welcome to the show today, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Well, you know, when we first met, by mm -hmm. our, our, uh, I was immediately fascinated with the type of work that you do. And I think that a lot of people don't even, uh, can't imagine um, maybe what it is you do do. So what kind of work do you do in an ordinary, um, you know, for, for your job? For a daily work. Daily work, yeah. Um, I'm researcher and lecturer at the university, okay. medical university, and uh, besides that, we, are, we do not only do our research for journals where we publish it, we have to bring our research out to the public. Because when it comes to environmental health, the topics, they concern, these topics concern the people outside. Like, I don't know, pollution in the air, outdoor air pollution, uh, climate change, to um, nutrition facts like chemicals in, in, uh, in, in, in pesticides, in nutrition, and so on. So you're, you're a medical doctor or, uh, and a researcher yeah. and a professor. Yeah. So you're teaching um, typical college age students or are they graduate students? They are grad students. We have those regular university students. And of course, um, we have some postdoc uh, lecturing where when we are teaching uh, students for public health courses for example. Okay, and how does the public get your information? You mm -hmm. said part of your job is to give information to the public. This show is one way yeah, we can get information. Uh, there are different ways. First of all, uh, when we do some research, we have always a press release of our results. Okay. This is right now uh, one of uh, the targets of our university, that uh, we, we think that it's not only for, to, for uh, the specialists who are reading those journals, it is for the public, and so we do press release. And of course, if there is some emerging issue in Austria, uh, for example, is there a problem uh, with mobile phones? And there are some organizations who wanted some talk or presentations. We stand for that, and we are doing that presentations in order to give information which is scientifically based. Okay, and your your university is a public university, yeah. meaning it's supported by taxpayer dollars. That's correct, and therefore the, the task is for me obvious, especially for public health. It has in the name public health public. So we do not only make our research in our small rooms. Okay, and, uh, so how did you get interested in this work? What's your background that you became involved first in First of all, I started, first I started um, ecology. And after two years, all my colleagues, they got specialized, for example, in uh, biology, more in geology. And I thought uh, ecology and the association to human health. Is there an association? How is it? And I decided in this time that I study medicine together with ecology. That was the starting point, actually. So you studied ecology, and ecology is the study of our environment? That's or? correct. Um, our, that is the science of uh, associations and uh, connections in between our ecology, ecological system. And uh, this is a very s systemic uh, approach to look at our world, but it's not focused on human health. It's pure nature and how does it work? And what I tried to figure out is, okay, we are here yeah. as a human being. 
how do we interfere or how can we get good out of this very intense uh, system we are surrounded by. So you finished your ecological studies, which would have More been... More or less. We, I, I worked parallel. Oh, parallel. Okay. Yeah. And then you became a medical doctor. Yes. And did you actually end up practicing medicine as well? You have to do, because you have to do your specialization. So I did my specialization in environmental health, okay. which is a perfect combination to my ecological study. What is environmental health? Environmental health is investigating environmental factors, physical like noise or chemical like pesticides or industrial chemicals and their effect on human health. Okay. Is there are some um, factors associated with a health problem? This is the main focus. And there are two approaches. It's one is simply curative and medical. So if we have a patient and there is some chronic disease and uh, we are, uh, we, we try to analyze the situation and we think there might be an environmental factors which aggravates that uh, disease, we are looking on that. This is really individual, but the other uh, approach, which is in my view a lot um, interesting and um, much more interesting and much more important is the preventive approach. So we try to establish and to develop uh, guidelines which we recommend to the policymakers to implement in order to protect the health of the population. For example, yep. we have a fine particle problem Q2 diesel exhaust, for example. Fine particle problem fine from particle diesel, from diesel exhaust. Diesel exhaust. Okay. So there are very super fine particles um, in my, less than uh, in, in 100 nanometers, let's say. Okay. Very, very fine. So we have a problem and we try to generate and develop um, guidelines which says if you keep the concentration of particles in this level, you can protect human health. So, and you, so you have obviously studied this field quite widely, you're a teacher in it, and now that you've been um, you know, studying it's ecological nice. health and human health and, and public health, some things are coming to the top of what's important in life now. And probably you have some things that seem more important than others to you, and maybe some seem even critical to you, in regards to human health, or I'm even probably thinking um, planetary health and our effect on planetary health. And one question I want to ask you later, keep in your mind is, are we going to be the last generation of humans to exist as we understand it? Or are we, are we so quickly destroying our environment? Or are you an optimist? Or are we going to live in a post-apocalyptic uh, world? Uh, or are you optimistic? Very, very difficult question, okay. I must admit, but however, <laughs> There are some uh, major issues, I would say. Okay, ma one major issue is, of course, air pollution. When you think globally, we know that mm. several millions are dying premature death due to air pollution, indoor and outdoor air pollution. Mostly outdoor air pollution is generated by our transportation Lots system. Of fuels. Fuels. So, the next step is, okay, fossil fuels, where do they come from? Okay, you need some countries, oil countries. Uh, how is that uh, generated? Uh, so in, it, you start with air pollution and you end up in climate change. It naturally is going from one to the other. Yeah, you start with thinking about um, Greenhouse gases, is it only coming from our transportation system? No, it's coming from our food chain, for example, yes. our nutrition. When you're following that, you come, you, you will stop all of a sudden with how, uh, how is on our agricultural system? Is it sustainable or not? Do we need a lot of fertilizer? Do we need a lot of pesticides to generate and, and uh, to produce that? Uh, products. So you come to nutrition and it's really hard to say this is more important. You can, I think it's 
very important is that you say all of those uh, problems we're facing is in connection with our behavior and attitude, with our wishes. Is our consumption and our wishes for consumption designed like today, that we think we can have everything very easy? Or do we consider more, ah, if I step back a little bit, I can help myself in concerns in regard of health, and I help our globe, our ecology, our ecological system. So all of these things are just very interconnected. As it you is. as you yeah. start to say, it it's, it's it's air pollution is caused by fossil fuels, but fossil fuels feed our our uh, plant, our yeah. nutrition environment, and then how healthy is our nutrition as well? I was just watching. I think it's Food Inc. It was a ten year old documentary on uh, it's on Netflix a, a couple nights ago, and I could see that our our and I think most of our viewers will probably understand that our system is very industrialized, it's very mechanized, it's very fossil fuel dependent also to, for fertilizers and uh, chemicals as well used to kill uh, pests or uh, maybe some uh, herbal things. So all of this is connected and then we're consuming these products as well as now genetically modified organisms yes. and I, I want to ask you about that too. So. It's interesting because your your work sounds like it touches on, you can't isolate just, you try to isolate one thing, but it's it's probably difficult because of these factors. Yes, you are. You have to isolate because the um, view on everything, it's so complicated and the connections are very, um, very hard to understand and it's very hard to bring it up to the public. So you pick for example, one uh, issue you think uh, which is very important for us, like transportation and air pollution. So you can explain that if the level or concentrations of particulate matter is above a special limit, you know that in the community will uh, there will there will be premature death. A, count, for example, I don't know, 1,000, yep. 2,000, whatever. You can pick this and can bring it in order to raise awareness. It's only one aspect, but when it comes to uh, the public, you can say, yes, this is an air pollution problem, yep. but when we try to uh, bring a solution, it's very easy for you. Transportation means that we are using cars. Yeah. Okay. If you use a car, for example, to uh, for half a mile, what? it's an easy an easy alternative. You can walk. You you can ride your bicycle, whatever yeah. your bike. So you start with it's a problem air pollution and it can damage yourself and your health. On the other hand, if you are doing as if you substitute that, yeah. for example, one mile, you are doing it with a bike, yeah. you can help to lower the air pollution and you have a co-benefit because your physical activity in the average is far too less. Yes. You have a benefit for your health. So you protect on one hand the environment, on the other side, you can do something very easily, cost efficient. Promoting your health. own health. Yeah. So the, the public becomes personal. That's right. It's, it's the aim because otherwise when we are talking about problems. And too abstract. No yeah. yeah. So if we say, instead, Hans Peter, walk to the store and on the way to the store, you're going to meet the butcher, the baker and the candlestick maker. Yeah. You're going to make some new friends, have some connections, talk to people that's with their correct. dog. Yeah. You're going to have a lot of so more yeah. social connections. More social. Yeah, that's a psychological, psychosocial uh, aspect of transportation. Right. So, and, and then maybe it leads into another area might be, okay, well, instead of fossil fuels, let's get some solar here, or maybe, uh, I don't know, a wind, a small wind farm and, on your ceiling. And, and if you are following that thought, it's of course important to make the way more attractive. 
it's not attractive if you walk one block, I don't know, uh, with no sidewalk. 200 meters yeah. without anything, yeah. small sidewalk, yeah. 100 cars next to you, yeah. there is no green space, nothing, there is no shop anymore yeah. because they are gone. Yeah. This is a next feature that you, th that, that you see that city planning, walking, on the other hand, um, less physical activity with our children is connected in that way. It's very interesting, and it, and it is a way to bring the, the abstract to the personal, yeah. and then the personal back to the planning and saying, That's correct. I'm walking along here, but the sidewalk isn't here. There's no shops. I, it's dangerous to walk here, so we need to fix this somehow or yeah. create a separate bike yeah. lane that's safe yeah. or whatever it is. So obviously this is one, of, one really good example of how we can take this these complex issues that are facing us, and we'll get to this after the break because we will take a break here, but of how, what can, sometimes I think all the information out there, all the noise, so much information, what can I do to make a difference? So when we come back, we're gonna talk about that a little bit more along with some other things that we haven't touched on. You're obviously a very deep thinker and really yeah. valuable. <laughs> Lucky that the, uh, that the university has you. Um, and that our society has you because you're 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 asking very serious questions and able to communicate. Thank you for also being so fluent in English. Uh, appreciate uh, that yeah. because my German is uh, I gotta say it's not good. Fifty fifty. Anyway, well, thank you. Uh, we are um, going to take a short break. I'm Winston Welch. This is out and about on the Think Tech live streaming network series, and we are talking with Hans Peter Hutter, who is here uh, on a vacation, but actually uh, learning a lot about Hawaii. So we'll be back in a minute. Stay tuned for more of the story. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha, we're back and we're live. I'm Winston Welch and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series and we're talking with Hans Peter Hutter, senior scientist, associate professor and deputy head at the Department of Environmental Health, Center for Public Health, Medical University of Vienna. He's an ecologist, a medical doctor and a researcher in environmental public health and I thank you again for being here with us today and taking time out of your your uh, your vacation which is here and uh, but you give a lot of presentations around the world, I think, and on these topics. So now that you've come here to Hawaii and you've seen this uh, a paradise that we have here, what are your initial impressions? And are there anything that you would say right away for our policymakers? Here's an idea that maybe you haven't thought of, or here's something you're doing really good, or, or both. Let's start with a very personal impression. Okay. When I was walking at the street, and uh, the shops are open, and cold air is pouring out of the shop, of, the, of those shops. Yeah. Um, I think if it comes to uh, climate change and sustainable thinking, this is really not understandable. Mm -hmm. Inside, it's like you are entering a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. The doors are wide open, and you have an AC. Uh, which has to work. And I know that the consumption of electricity for this is enormous. It's enormous. So this is a very easy thing that, first of all, it's too cool inside, yeah. uh, which is not good for human health, employees, yeah. for them. It's not good for a customer mm -hmm. because you come from very hot, very hot, to very cold. Yeah. And this temperature differ difference is um, far too big. OK. 
Okay, so if you are reducing that problem, uh, so you're increasing the temperature inside, you save a lot of energy yeah. a lot, and of money. So I do not understand why the shops are doing this. It's interesting. It's only completely strange for me. Okay, so yeah? close the doors and don't leave the on the air conditioner so and cold. The air condition is, uh, you, you, you need to increase the temperature inside. Yeah. The same with, so everybody, I know that air conditioning is in, in, in the US and in some Asian countries very important. Yeah. But wherever I'm going and observing temperature difference in, in uh, and outside, far too, far too big. Too much. Too much. So, mm. first. Second, um, this is a beautiful island, no doubt. Uh, but the transportation system is not that which I would expect in a, on an island with this uh, reservoir of nature. Mm -hmm. um, as far as I got to know, um, Hawaii is advertising its nature. So how does that... Uh, is in line with the transportation system, which is built, which is based only, only, more or less, uh, except of the, uh, for the buses, on individual motorization. Yes, I do not understand that, uh, and I think this um, is a must to change. We have more cars than people on this island. More registered vehicles. It, 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 it's not wandering. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a big problem, and in fact, Hawaii has, I think, the worst traffic gridlock in the country. We compete with Los Angeles, yeah. but there's, you know, there's a million people on this island, and it's only this big, so uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good question and a hard one, and as we are looking at increasing populations here, as we drove from Waikiki to downtown, and I told you there's going to be another 11 towers planned just in one small area, yeah. maybe 20 or 20 in you know in the next five or ten years this uh, is an this is an enormous challenge i know that because you have a built structure and uh how do you change that into a environmental friendly transportation system i know this is a challenge but actually when you look at the figures and um even if you say oh climate change i don't care it's a question of health of the people here we know that car dependency is associated with, for example, obesity, because there is a lack of physical activity. Yeah. So even you say, oh, I don't care for oil, resources, fuel, whatever, it comes down to the health of the people. So you might have some people, actually, that leads to something. So we, we need to look at how we're rebuilding our, or, or retrofitting our our urban environment to have more walkability, more trees, uh, somehow uh, small scale, small scale, small scale uh, areas where we can walk to shops yeah. and to medical appointments for and example, uh, have smaller neighborhoods. Yeah, and for example, and very important for the children because very, yes. the development of the children. Um, I know it, it's in Austria. It's something better. Something in Vienna is is worse. Yeah. yeah. But when it comes to transportation and traffic, uh, parents are afraid to bring, to leave the children alone at the street. Sure, because so, of, just because of danger. It's yeah. a danger, it's a risk. So, so we need to have safe what places. Do they? Okay, they stay home, they look at their smartphone or a TV, mm -hmm. and then you have another problem. Yeah. So transportation system, and uh, with a transportation system, I think city planning, uh, is, is, is combined with that, is one of the major issues we have to, to think about. And I think we're, we're, we're working on it here in Hawaii. We're, we're looking to get, right now we have about 20, 21 percent canopy cover of trees in the urban area, mm -hmm. but it's been decreasing every year because mostly of development, they cut down the trees. We're looking at trying to get back to 35 percent canopy by 2035 and do our part for um, for the the heat, urban heat in island yeah. index yeah. where the concrete yeah. is making yeah, it yeah, very yeah. hot in that's here. Great. So that's one area because if it's too hot to walk outside, 
guess what? We're not going to walk outside. Old people can't go outside. Kids can't go outside. Dogs can't go outside. And the, the use of air condition will increase. And so the, when, it has to increase. Yeah, it has to increase because you cannot stay as, uh, with up, uh, when, when, you have, when you are older and maybe you have a lung or a heart disease in a hot apartment. Yeah. It's impossible. So uh, the, the idea to bring in a lot of plants is the same as you bring in a natural air condition. So this is the first you have to do. And what, what, uh, what, what's important for me, you do not need to invent all that measures. Right. I know books of them. Plant it's a tree. Everything and, and how, which one, yeah. where, how yeah. many per yeah. square meter. Everything is here. Yeah. This is, uh, I think, always uh, the message to the politicians or decision makers. Just do you it. Do not have to invent it. Yeah. Please look at best practice here, yes. best practice here. Yes. But just think about it. It's worthwhile to do that. Yes. It's important. It's, cr it's critical, I think, in yeah. fact, to do it it's because critical. our cities are going to become unlivable if we yeah. don't do it. Uh, we're looking at some climate change, whether you believe it's human made or not. And in fact, we have a major political party um, and a president of the nation who says that climate change is not human made and that the climate change may not even be real. Now, the, the Pentagon has identified climate change as one of the top threats facing the nation, yeah. which is interesting w, from a military perspective. Yeah, w, WHO uh, and, and all. How do you deal with, it's, how do you deal with colleagues and with, with people who are smart who say, Hans Peter, Come on, that's just, it's fake, it's fake news, it doesn't exist. Uh, humans have existed for, uh, you know, 100,000 years. The climate changes a little bit now and then. It used to, Europe used to be in ice, now it's gonna get a little bit warmer. This is all not true. How do you deal with that as a scientist trying to give science-based information? Okay, um, first of all, in, in the last couple of years, it becomes more and more difficult to um, bring up the scientific evidence to the politicians. Uh, not because uh, it's too complicated, but uh, if it's something which is not really nice or which you, uh, or an issue where you say, ooh, we have to you look go at against it. the cars and you have to go against some too hard. pesticide or chemical industry, yeah. Leave it. Yeah. So uh, the thing we are observing is that it's more doubt on evidence. Mm -hmm. Even this evidence, that's is 100%. Huge. Yeah. It's yeah. not 100%. Know, know, it's say, you know, very it's high percent. percent. Yeah. It's super high percentage. Yeah. But you cannot. Maybe there is some mm -hmm, some doubt. This doubt yeah. uh, is for us a very big problem. Because sometimes I'm saying, okay, so, uh, maybe in the next time you say, is two plus two really four? Yeah. Hmm. So we where just do, where do it end it up? Yeah? Go to the solution directly. We have to. Um, we have either you are discussing with those colleagues. Yeah. And I have to say, back home, uh, it's scientists, 98, 99 percent says yes, that is a problem, and it's human made. Punkt. Oh. So we're hoping so, that truth wins. The truth, yeah, we hope that, but uh, it's really a big problem for us. Well, because I, you are, you are the, there is a lot of work into that science. And if the science is not taken as it is, why are we working on that? Well, we don't save give the money. Don't give up, Hans no, no, Peter, because we, I think the truth will come, prevail. Yeah. Of course it has to. People see it for what it is. As we leave today and we have to close, what is the one thing that I can do, if there's one thing or maybe three very simple things I can do in a couple words to make a difference? Because all this is out here, but what can I do as an individual? First of all, uh, more respect to, to the nature. Okay. The second is very simple. When it comes to transportation, more work. Okay. Think about that. Another thing. Why uh, you turn on your turn off your air condition when you are leaving the house? Okay. And the other thing is um, eat less. Eat less. Yeah. Okay. Eat less. Well, Simple. I, and, and that's true. I know that eat studies less. show us, uh, yeah, uh, alternate day fasting and all types of things. So it's walk not, more. It, it need not to be fasting. We don't need to, yeah. yeah. It's only a little bit limitation. It's we are here and maybe okay. One will. 
Well, simple. really simple. And I wish we had more time to explore these topics. Maybe you'll come back to Hawaii again if we can, but I'm afraid we have to wrap it up today. So we're going to walk more, we're going to eat less, we're going to be more, more conscious of respect of the environment conscious. and each other. Yeah, so simple. I really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, we've just barely touched on a lot of issues. I encourage people to go to the internet and find out more about them for themselves of what they can do to make a difference. So I'm sorry, folks, we are out of time. It's awful. We have to wrap it up. I am Winston Welch. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. And we've been having a very interesting discussion with a super smart and nice guy, Hans Peter Hutter, who's a medical doctor and researcher doing very interesting work on environmental public health. And we hope that you've enjoyed today as much as I have. So thank you for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Thank you to our broadcast engineer, the lovely Robert McLean, our technical producer, Ian Davidson, our floor manager, Eric Kalander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. I'll see you here in a couple of weeks where we're going to have another interesting show on Out and About. Aloha, everyone.